Remember that when we look at dynamics problems and we talk about angles, there are a couple different ways that we can have the angles in our problems. The first way might be that you are pulling something on a flat surface, but you're pulling it at an angle. So an example of that might be you're walking through an airport with your wheelie luggage, dragging your luggage behind you at a certain angle. Another example would be if you were on a hill coming down a hill, and that's what we would call an incline plane. So in this particular sample problem, I want to walk you through the dynamics of an incline plane. On Halloween, you decide to go sledding on a 38 degree hill. So we know that that's going to be the angle of our hill. So if I draw a picture of that, here's our hill. Here's our 38 degrees. You are sitting on a sled on the hill. So you and the sled have a combined mass of 74 kilograms. And the coefficient of friction, which tells us how much the friction is, is this 0.13 value. So remember, it's symbolized by a mu that is generally between the value of 0 and 1. And the lower it is, the smoother the surfaces are, or the slicker it is, the less friction there will be. The higher it is, the more friction there is. So the first step in solving this problem, the first step in any dynamics problem, really, is to draw a force diagram. So I'm looking at you on the hill. And I would say, hey, there are a couple different forces acting on you. The first one that I almost always will add is that you're going to have a force of gravity pulling you straight down. Remember that gravity can only ever pull you towards the center of the earth. The next force that I would look at that would be acting on you is, well, you're not floating or sinking into or out of the hill. So there has to be a force of the hill pushing back on you, which is what we would call the normal force. So I'll say F sub N. Sometimes you'll see that written as an F or as, as a just an N if you want to symbolize that down to one letter. And sometimes you'll see the force of gravity symbolized as just a W just to symbolize it as one letter. The third force then, because we have a coefficient of friction, I know that there's going to be a force of friction acting on you and the friction always acts against the motion. So since you're pulling down the hill or you're coming down the hill, then friction has to be going up the hill for that. So when I look at that problem, I would say, hey, there are no other forces that I can think of that are acting on you. But these forces are the normal force and the force of friction are perpendicular and they're going into the hill and up and down the hill. But this gravitational force doesn't really fit into that same like going up and down the hill or into the hill. So what I'm probably going to have to do is I'm going to have to break that gravitational force up into components. And so that I have a component of it that is coming into the hill here that'll be i'm going to call gravity perpendicular to the hill and then i'm going to have a component have a component of it that is coming down the hill that is coming down the hill here that we're going to call gravity parallel to the hill so those are going to break my components up now, what's interesting about that is the angle is the question is really, well, which one of these two angles is the 38 degrees? So picture if I make this the hill smaller, the angle smaller, then what's going to happen is this is all going to flatten. The force of gravity is going to get closer to the perpendicular, which means this angle is going to get less. So this is the angle that has to be the same as this angle. So when I go to do the components, then I'm going to say, well, the force of gravity parallel is one component. So it will be the gravity times the cosine or the sine of the angle. And the other one will be the force of gravity perpendicular. So before I do that, I need to know what the force of gravity is because I know the mass. I can find that force of gravity by taking the mass, 74 times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 and say that that is 725.2. Now, when I break that up into components, I'm gonna have 725.2. If I'm looking at the parallel value, notice that's opposite of my angle, which means the parallel is going to be the sine of the angle, 38. And when we do that, we get 446.5 Newtons. Then to do the, per the perpendicular value, same thing, 725.2. Notice that it is adjacent to the angle, so it will be the cosine of 38, and that gives us a component of 571.5 newtons. Now, on the AP test, if this is the AP class, they do not like you to write components on the same 
uh, on the same image as your regular force. So you're either going to scratch out the original force then, or you're going to delete the original force. And so now we're looking at our net forces that are in the into and out of the hill direction and the up and down the hill direction. So when I look at the normal force then, I can look at this and say, hey, if I'm not floating or sinking, or if this sled is not floating or sinking, then all the forces out of the hill have to equal all the forces into the hill. So I can literally say that my normal force is equal to the gravity perpendicular, which is going to be 571.5 newtons. Now, why do we have to know the normal force? We have to know the normal force because when we go to calculate the force of friction, it is mu times the force normal. So I can take the coefficient of friction, point. So I can take the coefficient of friction, 0.13, times the normal force that we just found, which will be the 571.5, and that'll give us a force of friction of 74.3 newtons. So now I know this force of friction, I know the normal force, I know the perpendicular, these essentially cancel out, and I'm left with looking at these two guys where you're going to be sledding up and down the hill. So the next thing we can do is find the acceleration by doing F equals MA. This is our net force in the direction of motion, so it's going to be the gravity parallel minus the force of friction is equal to MA. Well, we already calculated the gravity parallel over here, so we can say this will be 725.2 minus the force of friction that we just calculated down here, 74.3 equals the mass, 74 times A. Subtract the two of those, divide by your 74, and you get an acceleration down the hill of 5.03 meters per second squared. And then the last thing we can do is tie this back into a kinematics problem. So we can say if the hill has a displacement or a distance of 34.6 meters down that slope of the hill, how fast, which means we're looking for a final velocity, will you be going at the bottom? And I probably would look at that and say that you're going to assume your initial velocity is zero. So the equation that does not have time will be VF squared, VI squared plus 2AX. The initial velocity is zero, so our final velocity will be the square root of two times that acceleration times the distance down the hill, 34.6. So we would end up with a final velocity of 18.6 meters per second. So I hope that gives you an idea of how to do an inclined plane problem and at least a beginning of the steps that you could use to start working out those kinds of problems.